Good morning. Welcome to our worship service on the second Sunday of Easter. I am extremely grateful for our guest preacher today, Reverend Denise Barnes. When she and I were scheduling for an opportunity for her to come and preach, she suggested this date. And at first I was like, oh, I'm not sure. But in hindsight, I am moving tomorrow. <laughs> so this just worked out perfectly. So again, thank you, Denise. Let's welcome her. Friends, would, would you please stand as you're able in body or spirit for the call to worship? Come, walk in the light. Come, gather in the love of God. Come, live in the unity of God's Holy Spirit. Good morning, Rivera. Good morning. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share the peace with one another. Thank you. Thank you. Am I on now? Yes. Okay. Brian left a tea, different, okay, we're good. I, I, friends, we got back at midnight last night to LAX, like, um, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, I am with you, and uh, that was, you can see I got in at midnight last night. Uh, so it's good to be with you, whether you are with us in person or joining us online, wherever you are on this beautiful, beautiful day. If you would just take a minute now and let us know that you are with us, if you're joining us online, there is a QR code on the screen next to me, or you can scroll below the, below the video to find a link that will take you to the registration. If you are here in person, you can grab those red pew pads and either register your attendance on the pad uh, paper or scan the QR code to go to that same registration link. A uh, few things that I wanted to make sure to lift up that we all know are coming up pretty soon. 
Um, actually, starting today, the United Women in Faith are hosting a book drive. This is both new and used books, so books of all types, um, to support My Friend's Place, which is in Hollywood. Um, it is a, a center, a support center, a housing center for unhoused youth ages 12 to 25. Um, so keeping in mind the population the books are for, I know they're specifically looking for graphic novels, comics, short stories, poetry, science fiction books. Um, so if you're looking to do a little spring cleaning of your bookshelves and you have any of that at home, uh, we would be happy to collect those here. Or if you feel called to pick up a few new volumes of any of those types of things, uh, we'll be collecting those here for a few weeks to support my friend's place. Um, also, starting uh, the middle of this week, we are hosting the Pastel Society of Southern California's um, most recent exhibition in our chapel and in our Ocean View room. Um, it is already all hung today, Lynn. Is it all hung? It is all hung today, so if you're here with us in person, you can get a sneak preview. You don't have to wait until the 10th. Um, I can even open the Ocean View room door after worship, so if you want to peek in there. Um, but it will be hung and available to view uh, for the next few weeks, and we are happy to be hosting them and their beautiful artwork here. And then the 21st of this month is Earth Sunday, and we are going to uh, celebrate our own little piece of creation right here in our neighborhood. So you are invited, everybody is invited to join us for a little prayer walk around our neighborhood. We'll start here at the church and take a little stroll around our neighborhood, probably not all the way down to the beach, but certainly enough down there that we can see the ocean, uh, stop and pray for our little bit of creation, several places along the way pick up any trash recycling, things that are not lovely parts of creation as we are on our little walk, and then in here back at the church for a picnic lunch. So if you are able to join us for that, we invite you to dress casually in your walking clothes that day, certainly in your walking shoes, um, and hopefully we'll have beautiful weather just like today to enjoy that. And then the last thing I just wanted to mention is that after worship today, there is the quarterly open governance council meeting. So all are welcome and invited to join us for that here in the sanctuary. Um, enjoy your coffee and treats and fellowship time. And then about 11.15 or so, we'll gather back here in the sanctuary for that open quarterly meeting. So let's turn to our moment of wonder. We are going to hear um, the beginning of Psalm 139 today. Um, which uh, I think everyone most readily will think of it as uh, everyone being fearfully and wonderfully made. Even if you don't know Psalm 139, everyone knows the fearfully and wonderfully made part. Um, you know it's in the Bible at least, right? If you don't know where it is. So that's where we are today is on Psalm 139. And um, I wanted to take this as an opportunity to um, point out, if you've not noticed them, we have a couple of beautiful new welcome banners um, in the lobby and one outside when the weather is cooperating that were, um, we were able to purchase um, with the money that was donated um, in memory of Dick Ferguson um, that I really point to this congregation's belief and truth and standing behind the fact that all people are children of God, that all people have a place in God's story and in this community. And so I want you to invite you to kind of keep that and that commitment that we as a community have made in mind when you hear the psalm read today and as you're listening to the hymns that point to that and as you listen to Reverend Denise and her message on that, um, that it is a commitment we do hold dearly as a community. Um, and those banners, those beautiful banners that I know Dick would be proud to show off were he still with us, um, are a, a, a testament to his memory and the graciousness with which he did welcome and love every single person, not that just walked through our doors, but that he passed in life ever and always. Um, and to be able to have those as, a, as an ongoing testament to Dick and also to our commitment as a community, I think is a beautiful thing. And then in lieu of a prayer this morning, I wanted to share with you um, the words, part of the words of a hymn um, that is Child of God by Mark Miller. And again, as you're listening, kind of keep in mind our commitment as a community that every person has a place in God's story and here in this community. So this is part of Child of God by Mark Miller. No matter what people say, say or think about me, I am a child of God. No matter what people say, say or think about you, you are a child of God. No matter what the world says, says or thinks about me, I am a child of God. 
and there is nothing and no one who can separate. They cannot separate you from the truth that you are someone, you are family, you are meant to be a child of God. Thank you, Dina. Friends, at this time, let us share any joys or concerns that we have with one another. Thank you. As Dina said, it is such a joy to bring the art back to our church. After five years of Rejoice in Art, um, we now have the Pastel Society of Southern California, which has been meeting here for probably 15 years, maybe 12 at least, um, have wanted to have their show here. Next Saturday, I want to invite everyone to this all-day festival, kind of like Rejoice in Art, but you don't have to volunteer. You can just come and enjoy it. <laughs> so from 10 to 5, we'll have booths, art booths on the lawn. There'll be about six booths out there with jewelry and artwork and photographs. And then in the two galleries, um, there'll be the artwork available for viewing and purchase. We will have a, a quick draw. There'll be 10 artists simultaneously painting, and you can watch, and you can stuff their boxes and maybe win one of their paintings, which they're all donating. So there will be a lot going on. There'll be awards. There'll be a little thing on the sunset patio. So 1 to 4 is the reception, but 10 to 5 are the booths, and we hope you'll all be here. It's so happy for all of us, I think, to have the art back. Thank you. Joys or concerns? I just received a text from Carolyn Coulter, uh, prayers for Brad for healing. He went to ER on Friday with pulse of 26 and had pacemaker inserted. He's home now, doing good, but please uh, lift him in your time of prayer, prayer for Brad Coulter. Friends, let us be in the attitude of prayer by singing together. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer. Lord of resurrection surprises. Open our hearts this day to the presence of Jesus Christ. Erase our excuses for unbelief and exchange them for strong witness to the power of your mercy and love. Give us courage and challenge us to walk the path of discipleship, knowing that Jesus goes before us, leading and guiding our steps. O oh, patient Lord, you wait for us to understand. You wait for us to remove the blinders of prejudice, fear, unbelief, confusion. You have offered to us the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We sang and celebrated last Sunday, but a week has passed and we have slid back into our old ways of perceiving your presence and love. So Lord, we ask that you would shake us up. Shake us up and cause us to look with new eyes on our Savior, the one who came that we might have life, abundantly serving all who are in need. Forgive our stubbornness and our complacency but reach out to us so that we may reach out with healing love to others. 
O oh Lord, the world which seems to be too much with us has claimed our souls. Our resurrection faith has become dim. And Lord, we pray that you would pour into our hearts, reviving our spirits, giving assurance to our souls. Help us to let the fear subside and replace our doubts with certainty in your love and healing mercies. As we have brought names before you this day, asking for your healing touch, be with us as we also receive that same healing love. We especially remember Brad Coulter at this time, O oh God. Be with him, be with Carolyn. Give them strength, courage, patience that only comes from you. For all the other prayers that rest heavily in our hearts, O oh Lord, we give them to you. O oh Lord, tend to our needs. Tend to the ones that we love and tend to those that it's hard to love. Help us to be the makers of peace. Help us to be bringers of joy. And help us to bring transformation to wherever we go. Give us joy and courage for all the times ahead, where we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our risen Savior. Amen. Lord, listen to your children playing. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children playing. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. I walked back to my chair forgetting why I came here in the first place. <laughs> the scripture reading that I have the pleasure of reading today comes from Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! 
How vast is the sum of them? I try to count them. They are more than, I, more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. What a joy it is to be here with you this morning. I've met some of you, I've worked with some of you, and now I get to meet you all in person. Um, so thank you for having me. My name is Denise Barnes. I am the Director of Justice and Compassion Essential Ministry Teams for our conference, which means that I help churches coordinate their mission and ministry um, from Hawaii and Saipan, from Baker down to um, San Diego. It's a great job and I love it. Um, and thank you for the Mark Miller song this morning. That is the song that kept me going when I was going through the ordination process. So um, it's a beautiful song. So I'm going to start off today by telling you about a friend of mine um, whose uh, name is Dinah, and she's a dog. I myself have two dogs, Jiminy and Sheldon, and I'm lucky enough to live very close to a dog park where they can run and play without being on a leash and make all kinds of new friends, both human and canine. A couple of years ago now, we met Dinah. She was a small lab mix who was very sweet, but had this way about her which I found really compelling. When I first met her, I was really struck by the whimsical way in which she walked. She held her head up very high in the air, and it was constantly scanning and moving, and her legs, she moved really high as she walked along, almost as if she was dancing. She met my boys, they sniffed, they played, they chased, and they became friends. And as I chatted with her family while we were watching them, I discovered that Dinah was completely blind. She'd been that way since birth. She lifts her legs up high when she walks as she's using them to feel her way. She walks with her head constantly moving from side to side because she's listening acutely for clues as to who and what is around her. And she plays joyfully and with complete abandon. And all the other dogs in the park play with her. When she finds another dog to play with, she'll bring her paw down on their backs so that she knows where they are and they understand that she wants to play. I have to admit, the first time she did this to one of my dogs, I held my breath in anticipation of him scolding her. But it didn't happen. They chased and played with her. All of the other dogs there treat her the same way as they treat each other. They can clearly sense that there's a difference in her to themselves, and yet they adjust, adapt, and welcome her into the pack along with everybody else, just the way she is. And of course, this is exactly what we are called to do as churches who are part of the Global United Methodist Church. Our Christian teaching tells us that we must hold truth to the values that all have equal worth, equal status, and deserve the same love, care, and treatment as everyone else. Your vote last year to become a reconciling church means that you too have committed to living out your Christian faith in this way. I am an out lesbian ordained in full connection in a church whose global book of discipline states very plainly that homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. But I am supported, loved, and affirmed by very many in this annual conference. As part of my appointment, I serve as the LGBTQIA advocacy coordinator for our conference a role which places me right at the forefront of the battle for dismantling harm done to queer folks by organized religion. Now, more than ever, we need to make sure that all feel welcome and included in our churches, particularly as General Conference is finally happening this year, actually in two weeks' time. This will be the first General Conference since the Special Called Conference of 2019, when our global church voted to double down on the harm being done to queer people and to exclude them further, making punishments for queer clergy and their allies who perform same-gender marriages more punitive and more harmful. 
And we've been in limbo for a long time, worrying and waiting, unsure of the future, and for queer clergy where the charges will be brought against us in the meantime because of how we identify or who we love. Luckily here in the Western jurisdiction of which our annual conference is a part, we're in a safer and more affirming place than many others. And in 2019, the jurisdiction launched a new campaign called Where Love Lives. They described it as Where Love Lives is a place where human diversity is celebrated as a sign of God's divinity and a place where we honor the sacredness of creation. This is who we are and the church we are a part of. Underpinned by our scripture today, which is one of my favorites, I rely on it often to remind myself who and whose I am. When I was still fighting with God over this call to ministry placed on me and struggling to come to terms with it in light of the church's stance on who I was created to be, this psalm was what kept me going on the path, stopped me from giving up, and made me remember God's love for me. Sometimes the work for equality is not easy. We are trolled online, fed messages of hate and exclusion in many different areas of our life, and made to feel that our differences to the norm created by society, which makes us less than and unworthy of the same privileges awarded to everyone else. And of course, I'm not just talking about sexuality here. The white, cisgendered, heterosexual, male default by which we are all measured dominates our worlds in which, which makes us feel diminished and lacking and which results in physical, mental and emotional harm to our very souls. But the words of Psalm 139 call all of that into question and provide us with the assurance that we are created by God. God who forms us together, who knows the plan in store for us, who surrounds us always, who knows our thoughts and words before we do, and who created us fearfully and wonderfully. Through this psalm, we are invited to celebrate an identity which is rooted not in what we say about ourselves or how others label or devalue or dehumanize us, but instead in God, who is the only one who knows us deeply and intimately and loves us so fully. What a precious gift. The labels created for us by the rest of the world are not the things that matter and not the things on which we should rely. And here's the meat of it. We cannot live our lives in two ways. We cannot live one way in front of people and another way in front of God. That isn't possible because God knows us, surrounds us, searches us and loves us. We are called to be exactly who God created us to be. Not to be shaped and reworked by the rules made by a society too concerned with labels and hierarchies, with haves and have-nots, but to celebrate and wonder at the amazing human God created us to be. We live in a world where human life has been devalued, where so many are not looked upon as beloved children of God by people who cannot or refuse to see that this wonderful act of creation shining out from them. But God still sees us and values us. This is what we hold on to and what we share with all of those in our community and the world beyond. We are transformed by God's love and we have the ability to transform others with that same love also. This is our call as Christians, our hope and assurance in a world torn apart and divided by man-made constructs and created norms which are designed to tear us down and separate. Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote a poem when he was in captivity entitled, Who Am I? In attempting to answer this question, the poem asks, am I then really that which other men tell of? Or am I only what I myself know of myself? Who am I, this or the other? Am I one person today and tomorrow another? Am I both at once, a hypocrite before others, and before myself a contemptible, woe-begone weakling? But he concludes with, who am I? They mock me, these lonely questions of mine. Whoever I am, thou knowest, O God, I am thine. 
the greatest gift we have from God and one on which we rely in all we do is illustrated so beautifully for us in Psalm 139. We are personally created. We are known and we are loved. We are seen. We are safe. We belong. We are valued. We are heard. We are named. We are accepted. And because we know all this, we also are assured that we are in a relationship with God and we are in a relationship with each other. The psalmist has it right. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God knit you together in your mother's womb, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, known from the beginning as a child of God. <clears throat> and we will not be whole until the whole church recognizes this. You would think, wouldn't you, that knowing this, having this great comfort and knowing who and whose we are, that we would be able to be vulnerable and open to all of those around us and to create a safe space for all people to be vulnerable in. And yet we consistently fail to do so. This vulnerability is particularly intense among those of us who are LGBT. We find our worth questioned and our dignity undermined in ways that many never will. I believe that because God knows us in the womb, God already knows our place on the gender and sexuality spectrum, despite the long, hard journey we must go through to understand this place ourselves and then to accept it for ourselves. The queer family I know are not people who chose disordered affections at some decisive moment in their lives or were recruited by wizened old gays and lesbians, as many have claimed. They were born this way and long to live as God has called them into being. They were known in their mother's wombs. Jason Biasi said, diversity is not only a matter of all people having the right to be present in or lead the church, but diversity is also about the church needing all kinds of people in order to hear its diverse scripture right. I was once teaching a confirmation class when I was serving at Hollywood UMC, and we talked about this piece of scripture there and dug deep into the theology of it in ways in which only 14 and 15 year olds can. As we came to the conclusion of this session, which ended up much deeper and longer than I had planned it for it to be, one of the young people came up to me and said, so God does love us then, us rainbow kids, this broke my heart in so many ways. This young person had grown up in that church all their life, a place which had always been reconciling since they had been a part of it, a place famed and celebrated for its inclusivity, a place where I as an out lesbian was their pastor, a place where queer people were in leadership and made up much of the membership. Still, because of the stance of the church, the culture of our country and the society in which we live, that young person was still unsure that they were loved and accepted by God, made in their mother's womb with a plan for their lives. The church's call as we follow the teachings of Jesus and all he showed us is to protect the vulnerable, to protect love and care for that which God created. Of course, we won't always get it right. We will make mistakes. We will hurt people and we'll hurt ourselves. War, poverty, famine, and so much more are all part of harmful human cycles in which we have become caught up. Yet through it all, God calls us to be faithful witnesses that God's mercy, love, and grace endures, that God's love is made manifest, that the body of Christ can heal a broken world. You remember the story of the paralyzed man, I'm sure. Mark chapter 2, if you want to re refresh your recollection. But the crux of that story is that the paralyzed man, who was lowered through the roof to be close to Jesus, wasn't healed on his own. He had to be carried by his friends and lowered on a stretcher through the roof by his friends. We all need others who will extend themselves to bring us to the source of healing. None of us can do it alone. And the LGBT community can't do this alone. And this is where we need your help. You've taken the first step, 
but there is more to be done, so much more. As I close today, I have some questions for you, things you must ponder and figure out for yourselves as you take this journey to being a church which truly welcomes, loves, and celebrates all people. We all know that the church is a human constructed institution, <coughs> excuse me, which means it can and will grow, but very, very slowly. But it will only grow towards the light if it is confronted over and over again by the brave, the bold, and the beautiful among us. You have already committed to becoming a reconciling church, but now I need you to go a step further. Will you be a friend we LGBT people can count on to carry us on stretchers when we can't do it alone? Will you fight the sickness that has put us on stretchers so that we can be made whole enough to get up and help the next person who needs our help? Will you join me in making this congregation, this conference, this jurisdiction, and this global church a living sign, a living sign of the alternative community where all are welcome? Will you join me in making the best possible version of ourselves we can be, serving the poor, working for justice, caring for one another, so that they will know we are Christian by our love, our prayers, our presence, our service, and our witness. Will you join me in cultivating deeper, meaningful relationships and having restorative conversations with those with whom we do not see alike, rather than just hurling stones? Will you join me in being disloyal to church laws that discriminate, knowing that disloyalty is often real obedience? Will you celebrate with me that each of us is fearfully and wonderfully made. And finally, will you get up from your stretcher and accompany me on this magnificent journey into God's love and welcome. Amen. Thank you for the powerful words, Reverend Denise. Friends, all that we have belongs to God. As we celebrate our unity as a community of faith and focus our hearts on the risen Christ, we joyfully lay our possessions at the altar. Through the grace of God and the bounty of this church, we have the ability to share our gifts so that all may have what we need to live. So we thank God for the opportunity to truly be in fellowship with one another and with the world through our offerings today. You are allowed to give either through a QR code online or in the offering basket in the narthex. And may the Holy Spirit guide you in your giving. Take 
take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light, take my hand. Precious Lord, lead me home. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me Let's praise God for each good thing. All creation shout and sing. Praise three persons, yet one love, maker, savior, holy dove. So would you please join with me in the prayer of dedication found on the bulletin or on your screen. Generous God, we offer you our gifts as best we can. Although we don't share everything in common as those first believers did, we are sharing these gifts that they may be used for the common good. Bless these gifts with the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless us with a spirit of unity and love, and bless our ministries that we may bring your message of unity and love for all the world to know. In your Holy Spirit we pray, amen. Please be seated. Friends, at this time, um, please turn to page 12 on your hymnal for the invitation to the table. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this time, please raise your hand if you would like to receive a prepackaged version of the communion. We have some to share with you. Otherwise, the um, rest of you can come up to share the bread um, when it is available. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to, to give, give our thanks. thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, creator almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us. He took bread gave thanks to you, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his friends and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Brought your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray 
pray the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the gluten-free bread, so please come and receive from one bread. All right, friends, come and receive. Our communion hymn is number 620, One, body, one Bread, One Body. This is the love of Jesus Christ for you. One bread, one body. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many,
eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may come to the love in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join in singing number 700, 700, Abide With Me. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 3. Number 700 found in your United Methodist hymnal. And please stand. today may you remember when you find yourselves on those moments when you're laid flat on the stretcher that you are fearfully and wonderfully made go now in peace to love and serve the lord amen amen amen